Thank you. And uh, oh, I need to enlarge my screen. And then I start asking you the questions, and the conversation will start. Okay. Uh, and I you can't know, actually remember what my com my questions. Okay, were. I I will I will I will uh, ask them to you uh, before. It's already re recording, but we will uh, cut this okay. off. But once we start it, it's live. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because we don't want to edit. Um, how and why did you get involved in international expeditions in the first place? Which is your favorite expedition occasion? Did you ever experience any problems? When I read the first two questions, I thought, well, that's too much about your business and not about the experience and international. But then it came, did you ever experience any problems given that you were a woman in a predominantly male environment? I love that question. And what is the one thing you would rec recommend to other women wanting to work in the international expedition arena? I think that's a really beautiful question too, uh, because it's so unique what you do. Uh, all the other women I have interviewed, they're all international business women, but they, they don't go out into nature. And yeah, because I know the force of nature in a different way, you know, for me, it was the, the river teaching things and the campfire and the, uh, the yeah, the, how do you say that? The, the, uh, you know, the connections that you make yeah. with uh, people and how fast it goes because of these activities. Uh, and there's, 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 no, there's no barrier, there's no facade when you're all equal and all the same. And yeah, when you're all scared or when you're all happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I, I, I totally understand. So that's why I love to interview you. And then, um, yeah, at the end, I will ask you one question. Is there anything you would, uh, that I haven't asked or that you want to say, you could say, uh, go to my website or my next trip or whatever, if there's anything else you would uh, want to advertise, because for the rest, it's just advertising through sharing knowledge and experience and having a conversation. Yeah. Um, and I will make sure that uh, because I know what uh, I went to Kenya, I went to Guatemala, I went to Costa Rica, I saw whales, you know, I know I, I will uh, help you to uh, I will ask the questions so that you can show your expertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't so, have to promote. I need to get a glass of water. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Um, and then, uh, then we finish, my assistant will edit it and uh, we will add some ads at the end, a few of mine about my book, about the network and about my business and also one of your business. So that's why we wanted all your links and uh, my assistant will have a look at your site and she will create the ad with the same branding colors. And uh, I think, did you send the logo as well? I don't have a logo yet. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then we can't use it. Again, that's one of the things I haven't got around to doing. <laughs> yeah, that's the business uh, thing. But you know, if you are already operational, you can do that without a logo. La uh, yesterday, no, two days ago, a woman um, visited uh, one of my network meetings and she was in business for 20 years and she said, I still don't have a website, but yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. to. <laughs> it shows. Yeah. All right. So, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hi ladies, welcome to another episode of the Power of Women in Business, where I interview international business women who have an extraordinary uh, capability or knowledge that they really would like to share with you. And today I uh, want to introduce to you a woman of my heart, because she does something I know a lot of from uh, when I was in another business. I'll build up a little uh, suspension. It's Catherine, Catherine Edsel, and uh, welcome uh, to the show, Catherine. Thank you. Hi. So just for you to know who this magnificent lady is, Catherine Edsel, I need to put on my glasses now. Catherine Edsel is the creator of the Matriarch Adventure. It's a 10 day transformational expedition for women to track desert elephants, push their own boundaries and meet challenges head on. 
with 20 years of experience in expedition leading, a paddy dive master yoga teacher, mother, TEDx speaker, and international best-selling author. Catherine uses all her skills and experience to encourage women to step out of their comfort zone and have a real adventure. She is also now developing expeditions for mothers and daughters, coral reef conversation expeditions in Madagascar. And she has a new jungle expedition in the pipeline. Wow, you're still creating, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so, so you're you're going to uh, you're traveling to Madagascar uh, in the near future, aren't you? Yes, um, I'm going out on the 22nd of February, and the expedition starts on the 1st of March. Wow, it's a, it's an island, isn't it? It's sorry, it's an island, Madagascar. Oh, yeah, Madagascar, yes, of Africa. So it's uh, we're going to. I mean, there's lots of incredible wildlife there. And yeah. David Attenborough covers it regularly, but we're going to be looking at coral reefs out there. Okay. Um, I've never actually been there before, so for me it's the first, which is, you know, I'll be bringing a group of women as well, so we're all having first together, so it's incredible. Wow, interesting. So you haven't done, it's it's the first time expedition? Yeah, this yeah, one, I mean, I've led lots of diving expeditions before, and I've done a lot of reef check, which is a coral reef conservation program, where you train people to be citizen scientists, basically, mm. and study the reef. Um, but I've never done it uh, with a group of women before, and I've never done it under my own steam and my own label. So this good. Is <laughs> but but you've you've already done other trips on, under your own label, eh? Yes. So the main one, my flagship, is the Matriarch Adventure, which is the Desert Elephant Adventure you were mentioning. And uh, and like you said, I'm also launching a new mother and daughter, which is similar. So the Matriarch Adventure is for women. Not not exclusively mothers, but it was originally aimed at mothers to get mothers, you know, who are, you know, a lot of the time just spending time ferrying the children around, sorting out after school clubs, going to work, unloading the dishwasher, driving the kids more. Mm -hmm. So it was really to just say, you know, just remember who you used to be, the things you used to do, and we can go and do that together and have an amazing adventure in the desert with elephants. And the mother and daughter one was something which... Um, Actually, one of the mothers who was on the previous adventure said, I'd love to bring my daughter here. And I yeah. hadn't thought about that. But when she said it, I thought, actually, yeah, for, for teenage daughters or young teenage daughters who are about to blossom and grow into their own independent women selves, to have that bonding time with mother and daughter you know, in a really special environment, to have that to sort of come back to as a leveller when you know, when they're slamming doors and, you know, going out all night on the party, <laughs> you've kind of got that really nice experience that you share together in yeah. the Caribbean desert. So that was kind of back from that. That's, that's so beautiful. Wow. So, and, and I, I love what I hear you say. Uh, your clients give you the ideas for new trips, for new products. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because... You know, I've, I've, experienced, I've had a very lucky life and I've experienced a lot. I've been to amazing countries and not everybody has. So if people have an idea and they want to do something in this sort of safe realm where, you know, they're guided and they're held and we work with each other, we support each other. Um, you know, we do yoga and meditation as well as doing citizen science and it's just a really nice space in which to, to do a massive adventure. Yeah. It's a really nice community. And what, and what would you say to a busy businesswoman who is now listening and think, well, that sounds good, but I cannot go away. I have my business and uh, it's so busy and I have this and I have that. I'd say it's only 10 days. And 10 days, actually, in the scheme of things, is very doable. Mm. Um, I was literally in 10 days in Tanzania um, this month, at the beginning of this month. And, you know, the whole build-up, you're thinking, oh, my God, I haven't sorted this out, and I haven't sorted that out. And you get on the plane, and you're still sort of feeling quite anxious about all the things you haven't done. And then you get there, and you're a bit tired. And then the next day, you put your phone away, and then that's it. And actually... The days are so long and they're so rich and they're so fulfilling 
that 10 days actually feels like a month. Yeah. And you get back and nobody actually realises that you've gone. You know, there's a, like, oh, yeah, we kind of did miss you a bit. And yes, oh, you know, we, we managed to hold the fort while you're away. And it's just not a big deal to everybody left behind. But it's for you. You've just reinvigorated everything about you. You've sort of relaxed. You've confronted all the things that were causing you problems and oftentimes it's actually a really good memory to sort out those issues exactly and 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 then they turn out to be only in your mind and, and they're not real issues yeah and, okay. and and they don't turn out to be real issues at all no 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 <laughs> oh so um how and why did you get involved in international expeditions in the first time always loved traveling i mean when i started i was 27 years old so it, i was quite young i would had a bit of life experience i had a theater company um i'd worked with different theater companies around the world but it was more the fact that i was ready to embark on you know the, the whole world and i i set off initially as a sort of quest for myself um, I, I had a year of saying yes, so it was a year of just saying yes to every opportunity. Mm -hmm. This took me on these incredible adventures. I was working with turtles in Costa Rica, and then I went to India, and I worked in Nepal, and I climbed mountains, and then I worked for NGOs, and there was lots and lots of connective, really sort of say yes more um, instances. And I was sort of, at the time, very interested in Joseph Campbell and his idea of following your bliss. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I hadn't really read that much about him and, you know, I hadn't really looked into the hero's journey. But when you look a bit deeper, you see that we're all on this big journey. And so sort of getting this whole international um, adventure scene was actually part of my quest. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I felt like it was, a, it was a really incredible period of my life where I could actually follow that dream and get involved and when, once I was out there I mean I love the tropics I don't really like the UK weather no I, love, <laughs> I don't really like the cold so for me to then find myself in the jungles and the deserts and you know beautiful mountains I just thought well I can do this you know why why, why would I want anything else so and then I was working for expedition companies sort of as a freelancer, so I'd work for five months with one company, then a couple of months with another company, and then come back again. So I had this sort of rolling uh, work that I'd, I'd do, and, and it meant that I could live my dream, as it were. I know, yeah. So, and, and, and why did you decide to start to do that on your own? Well, again, that was very much prompted by other people, so it was women mums in the playground who were saying oh you know I'd love to you know I'd love to go on adventures with you actually sorry let me back up a bit because before that it was when I had my children so my children um came along and it was not all the bed of roses it was very difficult for me at times um especially as an expedition leader you can't really go back to work like you would if you were in a bank or you know had a conventional job or anything that was in an office i know you know there was no way i could just say right i'm off here are the kids and i'll see you in a couple of months so initially i thought i'd take them with me but this didn't really work out so um it was a slow it was a slow process of trying to work out how to manage my life and their life together and initially it was with me taking them w with me so i'd lead expeditions with them in tow which was great and some of it worked really well some of it not so well but it meant that i could actually spread my wings a bit and as soon as they became a little bit older and i could leave them behind i was doing shorter expeditions but these were always for other companies and so not for myself so mm -hmm. the whole business the business thing was for other women so it was other women saying oh i'd love to do what you do and me thinking well why not design this why not set this up so wow. that's where that impetus came from you know, I, I, that's interesting because um, I, you, we were just talking. I had a similar life. Eh? I've been, I've always been in the mountains and everywhere, and many countries. I worked in many countries. I was, I was also leading expeditions within outdoor kayaking, hiking, eh? mountain biking, a different arena. 
And uh, people also told me, oh, I wish, uh, you know, I could do that. And I always thought, well, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and it's like that, and it's, it's really interesting. And to be able to facilitate that, because you do see, like you said, the businesswoman who's really busy, you know, she's got so much to do. The mum is so busy. How will I manage the children? Who will look after them? So there's all these things that, that actually stop you doing it and you know i have lots of people say oh i'll do it next year i'm mm -hmm. thinking well don't wait too long because you know i yeah. don't know what i'll be doing next year it may not exist next year i'm not you know it, it's just something that i want to do now and i think the energy is now and i think yeah it always is, yeah it always is that leap of faith is really important yeah but on the contrary from what what i wanted to say is i just thought okay if you want to do that do that but you thought hey if you want to do that i am going to create that i am going to facilitate that yeah. and I, I like that so that's how your business started yeah yeah wow okay so what is your favorite expedition location Oh, there's loads. Um, I think my my dearest has to be Namibia because mm -hmm. it's, I spent, when I was, yeah, 15 years ago, so when I was in my early 30s, I spent three months and I trekked 700 kilometers down the ephemeral river valleys. So it really became a part of me, you know, you're treading every day on that earth and you're sleeping out underneath that huge starry sky and meeting incredible people mm. and amazing wildlife and i think so for me namibia is just an incredible incredible country yeah the landscape always changes so if you're walking you know for three months you know you see a lot of changes in the topography and the geology and yeah it's and when you're driving obviously that happens a bit faster but is it a safe country to Absolutely. travel yeah yeah it's it's one of these uh countries that doesn't have a big political problem okay. um, there you know if you look on the government websites they'll say Vintook can be dangerous but you know, no more dangerous than london for example okay so, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think and there's very so we don't actually see anybody so when we're traveling around we won't actually meet another human being for mm. the whole time because you know unless we're in the village there's there's nobody there you know people don't so the, the likelihood of seeing anything dangerous was like impossible. Yeah, so, wow. Yeah, it's very safe. And what happens during those trips? Ah, uh, well, it's part of the thing is I want to retain it as an adventure. So because it's an expedition, I have I don't have a fixed itinerary. Um, I have an idea of what's going to happen, and of course I work very closely with my ground staff, and we plan it, but. I don't, it's not a tour, so I can't say day one you'll do this, oh, day okay. two you'll do that, yeah. day three. Because also, what people tend to do then is then they say, oh, we'll see where that looks like, and they go on Google Maps and they scan it. So for me, it's not about that. It's actually sort of really suspending your need to control and know and fix everything and just kind of hand over a bit, sort of become a little bit vulnerable and, and just give over give over a bit of yourself to somebody else to say i'm going to take this and we're going to have a great adventure do you trust me mm -hmm. kind of thing. so it's it's more about people trusting in me that i'm going to provide something unusual and extraordinary so i don't give the game away i keep it quite a secret ah good so you're not doing that now too i love that <laughs> So it's it's uh, it's a very male uh, dominated arena where you operate. Um, how how is it uh, for you as a woman to work in this arena? Yeah, so historically it was very male dominated, mm -hmm. and when I first started, um, it was really that people would come into expeditions from the army. So they were usually ex military men that I was working with, um, and I. I think they thought I was a bit strange to start with. They thought, you know, what, what's she doing here? You know, she's not very strong. She can't, you know, <laughs> surely she can't walk for 10 days at a time. And, you know, all this stuff. And I just was very persistent and just stuck around and showed that I was more to tenacity than the, than just being able to lift 30 mm -hmm. kilos, you know. So, and I have a, I'm a very community-minded person, so working in an expedition where you have to basically get on with everybody. Yeah. And if you don't, you have to just get on anyway. You know, there's, a, there's not really an option to be, uh, 
to you know to, to have bad feeling between people so my facilitatory nature is to actually smooth everything over all the time and um, so I tend to lead in a from the back so not the front so that was also difficult because people were like well why aren't you telling people what to do and I was like well I'm not not telling them what to do but I'm just allowing them to find out what they need to do and if I see that they're going wrong then I'll guide them rather than saying come you know I'm not a sergeant major basically so that that was a bit difficult for people for for the other men really to, to deal with oh yeah I but can recently, understand I think there's been quite an explosion in females in in all arenas you know it's, it's really come to the fore so I'm just out there blazing the trail and just saying you know this is absolutely possible whether you're a mum whether you're 70 years old whether you've got um, you know physical disability you know these sorts of things can be you can anyone can do anything it's not limited to your sex gender or otherwise mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. so but yeah it's it's now now and also now I don't care <laughs> you know so I don't you know pe- I've been around long enough I have that experience and that expertise that really people aren't gonna um, argue with me about it. <laughs> so and, and Catherine how do you find your international partners to work with uh, are those contacts you already had through your uh, former experience or how do you select these uh, because Although you are out in the nature on your own and you're self-sufficient at that time, I suppose, but you need your transports, you need probably visas or permissions or maybe a local guide. Uh, how, how do you organize all this? Yeah, so a lot of it is from my contacts I've, I've built up over the years, um, um, especially in Namibia, for example, they're, they're people I worked with 15 years ago. Okay. Um, but, you know, people change and there's different managers, but yes, just keeping those relationships open. Also working with other women. So I collaborate with other women who are like-minded and, you know, have similar skills and they have their contacts then. So mm. this, I can collaborate in that sense. So where I was just been in Mafia Island in Tanzania, um, I'd never been there before, um, but my partner had. Also in Madagascar, I've never been there before, but the woman I'm working with um, on this project, she's she has, you know, she spent quite a few years there so okay. she's got contact so it's just about yeah collaboration really yeah um, wow and also that you can do it through a recce and um, what I'm doing for my jungle trip is I'm going to do a recce to some places that I can, can you explain that to me what's that a, rec- a reconnaissance tour so it means that you go out and you just quickly visit a few places um, oh okay okay yeah so I think you can't you can't really tell anything in till you've actually seen it and things can look very different on paper or in pictures than they are on the ground oh definitely you need to actually go there and say okay well this is the actual distance on the boat from a to b yeah this is the risk assessment that i need to do so it's it's about being there so so sometimes i'll i'll do recce's as well and do you do you do those on your own um no, not always. I mean, it's quite nice to involve my family too. Oh, so, so you have a holiday and then you scout yeah, a new location. Ah, yeah. oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember when I organized my first uh, whitewater kayaking trip in Italy, I, I was on my own and, you know, there's remote areas and um, I, you, it's not safe to go on a river on your own. So I didn't. Uh, and I walked along the river for a day and climbed and, and you know walked through bushes and, and and branches and everything and but it was quite a challenge taking people on the river because you know in the kayak everything is completely different yeah, so yeah, do yeah. you experience that as well with a group it's always different yes yeah absolutely mm. yeah okay wow so um it's getting dark eh? <laughs> What is, what is the one thing that you would recommend to other women who would also want to work in the international expedition arena? So women, listen carefully. <laughs> I think it's, I mean, you have to have a passion um, for the outdoors. Mm. You have to be able to live uncomfortably and you have to kind of enjoy that. Um, there's something about expedition life which... I thoroughly love and it's that being on top of other people and living in a real community which I think we've lost in our 
uh, yeah. everyday lives a lot. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, intense, intense relationships with other people, being uncomfortable a lot of the time, either cold, wet, too hot, too, you know, covered in insects or whatever, you know, there's lots of, but also I think, um, the bugs, the snakes, the spiders, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just gaining experience. So really putting yourself in those environments. I mean, getting training, you need to know how to, how to manage risk, how to evaluate risk. Um, you have to, uh, you know, you need to have good first aid. You need to work with people who have good evacuation plans. Um, there are training courses you can do, like mountain leaders in the UK, international mountain leaders, if you want to do that. Your dive master, obviously, if you're going to leave diving expeditions. So there's, like, simple courses you can do to, to, to give yourself that sort of credibility. But I think the most important thing is experience. Mm-hmm. So if you... And you wouldn't embark upon it if you didn't love it. You know, you wouldn't be able to do it. So you have to put a lot of, sort of man hours in. Not man hours, that's a terrible thing. So if a businesswoman hours. was listening now and thinks, well, this could be an interesting business, but she's really a businesswoman, uh, you would say, well, if your heart's not there, if you're not willing to suffer and, and, and do all the commitments, please stay away from it? Or what would you say? I think, I think you could, you'd, if you wanted to do it as a sole business, then... Yeah, you'd have to be completely involved in it, hundred percent. If you wanted to support someone and do maybe the, you wanted to do that kind of business, but you weren't actually interested in the the rough and tumble of it, then you could do a collaboration. Yeah. Uh, but I think you know, so definitely, if if that was something you wanted to get into, maybe as a, as sort of something that you see yourself in, but you're not quite in yet, then work with someone who's already doing it, and maybe someone who doesn't actually like doing the admin side of things. Because, I mean, that's all part of it. If you're going to do a one-man, one-woman show, um, you know, you have to do the physical and the uh, mental side of it and all the logistics and everything. So Yeah. Wow. So we are coming to an end already, uh, Catherine. Um, and I, I was so thrilled to have you in this uh, series because I have done so similar things uh, like you. So there's not so many girls who who, who can be tough and be, and want to be rough in the in the outdoor and rural areas. Uh, so so I, I feel very much connection with you. Uh, so, uh, is there anything else you would like to say, or have I forgotten something to ask, or what would you like to add anything? Um, I just think it's, uh, you know, it's a big world out there, and I think whether you're working in, well, any kind of business, you know, sometimes you can lose a little bit of sight of what it is you want to do because the demands on you are quite a lot, especially if you're juggling home life and, um, you know, all, all the other things that we as women have to do. So I think it's it's really about getting into the heart and soul of, of the business that you're doing and, you know, believing that you're serving a purpose and knowing that you are serving a purpose. Mm. And, you know, when all, when all things are going wrong around you, it's just like, no, I, I have this vision. And sticking with that vision and you know that will carry you through because you can wake up in a in the morning and everything can be different and you know so you've just got to make the most of things every day now you know it's a there's there's no time to lose i don't think and That's don't put too idea. much pressure on yourself at the same time you know it's just be free with it and yeah but uh yeah that's a that's a brilliant takeaway and if they if they are not there yet they can join one of your trips Absolutely. And reflect. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So the next matriarch adventure is in November. So the dates are already out. Um, so yeah, if, if people want to come to Namibia and track desert elephants with me, then, then well, I, I I can talk from personal experience. I have done elephant expeditions twice uh, in Kenya and in South Africa. I totally agree with you. When you see an elephant, you know. It's it's uh, such a crazy uh, feeling and adventure, and you can feel their wisdom. It's yeah, it's yeah. it's a brilliant experience. I mean, they are the true matriarchs. That's why it's called the matriarch adventure because I was just in awe of their systems and their societies, mm-hmm. and their presence. You know, they're very intelligent. Yeah. Well, ladies, if you need a break. 
<laughs> and if you truly want to go on adventure, I uh, would suggest you uh, you will go with uh, Catherine. And uh, if you want to know how to get in touch with Catherine, you know that at the end of the video, there will be an ad with her contact details and her website and also her um, uh, keynote uh, TED Talk which is uh, very interesting. I really suggest you go and see that. So thank you so much, Catherine, for your thank valuable, you. valuable uh, information. Thank you, audience, for spending some time with us and uh, absorbing and learning and getting inspired. And I'll see you another time. Bye-bye.